Hey there guys, it's Amit, you're watching Dev Dreamer, and welcome back to lesson 42 in our JavaScript series. In this lesson, we're going to learn all about the call, apply and bind methods. As always, if you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Also, be sure to ring that bell and choose all notifications so you never miss an update. Okay, so welcome back to lesson 42. So in the previous lesson then, we learned all about the this keyword. And we said that usually this refers to an object, although we also saw that in some contexts it could refer to a DOM event handler. Whatever the case, by default, the this keyword is implicitly defined by its context. In other words, whenever we use this as normal, we're not explicitly defining what it refers to. We have no control over what it refers to. However, there are times when we do want to be able to control and define for ourselves what the this keyword refers to. And we can do this by using the three methods we'll learn about in this lesson, call, apply, and bind. Okay, so let's start then with the call method. Now, the first thing to note is that call and apply are very similar. Let's start with understanding call and then we'll move on to the others. So in our text editor here, let's go ahead and create a object. We're gonna call this game. So const game is assigned the value of an object literal. And this will have two properties. We'll say title, sign of the hedgehog. We're gonna go for year 1991. Now what we're going to do is create a function. So we're gonna say function, we'll call this info. It will take no parameters. And inside the function body, we're gonna simply console log this.title was released in this dot year. Okay, let's go ahead and invoke our function and let's see what we get in the console. So here, the console returns undefined and that makes perfect sense because think about it, what has this info function got to do with our game object? This is a function that is distinct from this game object. It's not a method inside of this object and so, of course, we're going to get undefined. So here then, we have a function that references the this keyword, but it has no this context. Let's now see how we can use the call method to invoke the this context of game onto the function. So the way that we do this is very simple. We simply say our function name, which is info, and then dot call, and then in parentheses, the name of the object. So this is going to be the name of the object that we want to bind our this keyword to. So in this case, of course, it's going to be game. So now if we save, now we get Sonic the Hedgehog was released in 1991. So here then we have a connection between our function and our object. In fact, what happens here is this actually becomes the object that is passed as the argument to call. So for example, here, if we console logged this, and save, you'll see that it's a reference to this game object with title and year properties. So that's how we can use the call method to control what this refers to. And we do that by simply adding the object name inside of the parentheses. Okay, so that's the call method. Now, earlier on, I said that call and apply are very similar. We could change this call method here to apply, save, and as you can see, we get the exact same thing. So what's the difference then between call and apply? The difference between them is when we want to pass additional arguments inside of our function call. So let's say then that we had the following. So we've got this.title. First of all, let's just remove this second console log. So we've got this.title was released in this.year. And then on the end here, I'm just going to say for platform, it features the character, character. So now, of course, if we save, we're gonna get all types of errors because whilst this apply method is handling this.title and this.year from our game object, platform and character don't exist. So to fix this, we can simply add those as parameters. So here I'm gonna say platform and character. And now what we can do is inside of our arguments here, we can add these as further arguments. So we're going to say for platform, we'll say Sega, and then for character, we'll say Sonic. Now let's save and let's see what we get. So we still get an error. Now, if we change this to call, you'll see that this works fine. Okay, so we've got our sentence and all of our variables and properties are filled in. So this works fine with call, but it doesn't with apply. And that's the main difference. When it comes to apply, what we need to do is we need to pass any additional arguments as an array. So if we just wrap this in square brackets, now if we save, 
and now that works fine. So the difference then between call and apply is how we call additional arguments. With call, we can write them out as normal, but with apply, they need to be inside of an array. Okay, so that's how to use call and apply. As mentioned, similar, but with a very small difference. Now let's learn about the third and final method, bind. So now that we understand call and apply, the bind method should be pretty straightforward. Here's the difference. With call and apply, they're good for one-time uses. So in our example, the info function will get the this context of our game object whenever we use call or apply, but the function itself will remain unchanged. We can see this if we simply invoke this function, like so, save, and we get a bunch of undefined. So although on line 12, we've used the apply method to alter or change this function so that we're pulling in all this information, the function itself remains the same. And once again, this makes perfect sense. There is no connection between this info call on line 13 to our game object, but there is on our info call on line 12 because we're using the apply method. However, sometimes we might need to keep doing this over and over again, so we'll keep invoking the function in different places with the this context of another object. So think of the bind method as a permanent change that will store in a variable. So with call and apply, every time we need to make a connection between our function and an object, we will need to keep using the call or apply methods. They are one-time uses only. But with bind, we can set these changes once and then just simply use our variable as the function. So the way that this works is we simply create a variable. So I'm going to say const, let's call this game info. And then we assign this to our function dot and then just like we used with call and apply this time we're going to use bind and then in parentheses as our first argument we're going to bind to our game object and then here we simply pass in our additional arguments so we'll say sega and sonic so now what we can do is we can use this game info as our function call and if you save as you can see in the console we get our statement but now the really cool thing is that now that it's been bound, we can reuse this variable as the function call over and over again, and it will always refer to the same object, even if we try to rebind our new variable. So if we had a second object here, call it game2. Now if we try to rebind game info, so we'll say game info dot bind, and we'll call game2 this time, referring to this new object. If we now try to use this, so game info, and then invoke it. And as you can see, that still doesn't work. We still get a reference to our original game info, which uses the bind method. So even though we try to rebind it here, once it's been bound, it's a permanent change and it will always refer to the original object. Okay, so that's all about the call, apply and bind methods. Let's go ahead and summarize. So we can use call, apply and bind to control what the this keyword refers to. Call and apply create a connection between a function and an object. The difference between them is how their additional arguments are written. With call, we can write them as normal, but with apply, they need to be inside of an array. And finally, bind is similar to call and apply, but whereas call and apply are only single case uses, bind is more of a permanent change that we can reference over and over again with a variable. Okay, so let's take a look at your tasks for this lesson. So for task number one, I want you to create an object called book and then add a title and author property. Next, create an info function that logs title was written by author to the console. Use the call method to log the sentence to the console. And then for task two, I want you to update info to include the year of release. So and was released in year. And then here, I want you to use the apply method to update the invocation. And finally, for task three, use the bind method to invoke the function with the new variable. So go ahead and pause the video, try these out, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the answers. So how'd you get on then? Let's see. So for task number one, we need to create an object called book. Nice and simple. So we say const book is assigned the value of an object. And then inside that, we need a title and author property. So I'm going to say title, let's go for the last battle. And then we need an author property as well. And this will be CS Lewis. Then we need to create an info function that logs title was written by author to the console. So what we're looking to do here then is outside of this object, create a function. So function, call it info. And then inside that, we're simply logging this.title was written by this.author, which of course is a reference to these two properties here. 
Now we need to use the call method to log this sentence to the console. So down here, we're going to say info, which is the name of our function, dot call, and then we need to pass our object as an argument. So in here, we're going to say book. And sure enough, in the console, we get the last battle was written by C.S. Lewis. Okay, so that's task one. For task two, we need to update info to include and was released in year. Let's just copy this. And we need to do this by using apply. So down here then, first of all, we need to pass in this year argument. Let's also add it as a parameter here. So we're looking for year. So down here, we can say comma and then the year. Remember, as we're using the apply method now, not call, arguments that we pass in need to be passed in as an array. So here we do square brackets and then I'll say 1956, which is the year of release. So now let's go ahead and save. And that works absolutely fine. We get and was released in 1956. And then finally for task three, we need to use the bind method and invoke this function with the new variable. So what we're looking for here then is a new variable. So I'm gonna say const and we'll call it book info. Then we assign this to info, but bind this time. And then our year argument. So now we can simply say book info, use it as a function, so we invoke it, save and we get our sentence to the console. So guys, well done on completing those tasks. That's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to learn all about something called the destructuring assignment. And as you come to see, it's going to make our life a lot easier. So be sure to tune in. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe down below, and I'll see you on the next one.